Hi there, this is Scott, and in this video, I'm going to answer a very common question in terms of which Microsoft Azure certification exam should I start with. People come from many different backgrounds. Maybe you're an absolute beginner, you have no experience with Microsoft Azure, and you want to get into it. Certification is a great way to learn Microsoft Azure, to go through a regimented training program and receive a certificate at the end to prove you have those skills. If you already have experience, certification is a great way to prove that you have experience to, to qualify you for future jobs and also for personal satisfaction. But we're all different. We all come from different backgrounds. Microsoft's offering many different certification exams these days. Let's talk about the different exams. And depending on your own background and your own preference, let's see if we can figure out where you should start learning Microsoft Azure. Now, the first thing I should say is there was an old set of Microsoft certification exams for Azure that have all now officially been retired. As of December 31st, 2018, there's a whole set of exam codes that are no longer able to be registered and no longer be able to be taken. So anything from the 7532 to 533, 534, 535, all of those codes are all retired. Now, don't worry if you already have those exams passed, then they're still sitting on your transcript. They're still valid. They still contributed towards an MCSA or MCSC if you had that as well. That didn't expire uh, from your qualification. It's just that you couldn't take the exam anymore. But as of we sit right now, you're not able to take those tests. So you're left wondering now, what should I do? The other thing is those certifications, the MCSA and MCSC that was relating to Microsoft Azure is also no longer able to be earned. So those certifications were retired at the same time. So these left nifty badges about MCSA or MCSE are uh, no longer able to be earned. Again, if you have them, those logos are still valid. You can put them on your resume. You can use them as a qualification. It's just that in 2019 onwards, no one can earn them. Okay. So Microsoft set themselves up for a brand new certification uh, setup in 2019 onwards. So you're going to see a lot new exam codes and not new certifications. And that's where some of the confusion comes in, obviously. So different web pages, different websites, different people are going to tell you to start somewhere and it may no longer be true. So these are, as of the time of recording, there are, I would say, five groups of exams. Now there are a couple of exams in each of these codes. That's why I use the asterisks. The asterisk means that there's more than one test that starts with that code. But we're going to talk about the 900 fundamentals exam. We're going to talk about the 100 series for IT pros, 200 for developers, 300 for architects. And there's also an expert certification for DevOps. And we'll get into that as well. Now let's talk about what there is for absolute beginners. The AZ900 exam is brand new and it's called Microsoft Certified Fundamentals. Now the Fundamentals exam basically goes through the absolute basics of cloud computing and doesn't really test your knowledge very deeply on specifics of Microsoft Azure's offerings or how to create resources or manage and maintain resources in production, but really is just uh, the basics of cloud computing and what the benefits are and things like that. Now, for me, this is an optional exam. You do not require to get this exam. It's not a prerequisite for any of the other exams. This is purely for personal interest. If you have only a small interest in Microsoft Azure at this point, maybe you want to go and get this certification just to uh, learn a little bit more about it. But if you are really serious and you want to become an architect, you want to become a developer or an IT pro, it is not required, okay? So, uh, but it's a great way to get into it if you're sort of just dipping your toe into the water. Moving up, we've got the AZ100 and AZ101 exams for administrators. Now there is a 102 exam that is a transition exam, but if you're just starting out and you don't have 533, then you're looking at two exams, 100 and 101. Now together, if you pass them both, you can earn an Azure Administrator Associate Certificate. So it takes two exams to earn this one certificate. You can take them in any order. The exams cover uh, different aspects of Azure. The 100 exam is infrastructure and deployment, and 200 exam is more of a security advanced exam. I would recommend doing the 100 first, 
between in these two exams there does seem to be a um, core set of knowledge which is the 100 and an advanced set of knowledge which is 101 so it makes sense to do 100 first and 100 101 second but if you're an IT pro if you are working on administrating and, and managing the operations in the cloud this is the right track to start if you've got that background in that already setting up Windows servers setting up replications uh, things like that then this might be right up your alley there's some PowerShell scripting in here uh, command line scripting you know managing Azure resources setting up for security etc controlling costs this is right up your alley within the administrators now if you're more of a developer Microsoft has simplified this the, the only one exam now the 203 exam will get you the Azure developer associate okay so if you can just take and pass this one test you get that badge uh, again it's very developer focused there's going to be code on it um, you know knowing your dotnet etc for architects now that is this is more probably the most difficult track architecture is is quite high level but quite broad so there are two exams the 300 and the 301 these ones I don't know if it matters the order so much um, the 300 has to do with the technologies of Azure and 301 has to do with design and how you design your solutions um, so there's there's slightly different focus they're not necessarily dependent on each other as much as 100 and 101 is okay so that's the overview of those those exam codes so far um, I get this question a lot right I just bought your courses thank you very much I appreciate having you in, as a student and I want to learn Azure but where do I start okay I mean it's it's so many different ways that you can start you you know you can as I just overviewed from architecture administration and development it's it really depends on where you come from now the architect test I feel still is the most difficult of the tests okay so if you are um, looking at doing all of them some people would want to do all of them or to move on to the DevOps which is a combination of a couple of them plus a new exam um, the architect exam is probably the hardest one it covers most of the topics it's a, a high-level exam but it's quite broad um, there was coding on the betas but I, my understanding is Microsoft took a lot of that out so when I looked at the updated requirements that were just published they took a lot of the coding out but there but um, it, it really not really also concerned with operations and monitoring and all this loggy files and things that are in the infrastructure so Microsoft's done a good job of separating out these tests to be to have different focus okay if you go on to the developer exam developing exam is a little hard as well um, it's gotten harder over the years there are more coding questions so imagine you're being given a scenario and you have to choose which of the following uh, dot net c sharp dot net code performs the task and so you're given four code samples to look at and you pick the one that performs the task filling in they do a lot of drag and drops and drop down list boxes and so picking the right command the right parameter the right uh, property in that lines of code is part of it it's aimed purely at developers you can expect 50 percent of the test to be coding at least so I would uh, say that in order you go to take this test you really do need to be able to fire up uh, Visual Studio and start to work with Azure and get really comfortable with it if you can't do that passing this will be very difficult finally the uh, 100 and 101 exams for IT pros I I still think it's the easiest of the exam sets um, and maybe that's just my my opinion but uh, focused on setup, maintenance, monitoring, logging, security, networking. There is not necessarily .NET code in there, but there is PowerShell and command line scaling. You know, think all the things that that operations team really needs to have a handle on. Now, my approach was to take the architect test first. Now, back then, it was the 534 test that became 535. Nowadays, uh, if I wanted to go this route, I would take the 300 test first. Now, the 300 test is, um, and the 301 is the hardest set of exams, okay? 
in my opinion. So really it tests you. This, the amount of time you have to spend studying is more. The amount of knowledge that you end up with at the end of that process is higher. You put in a lot more effort. Um, once you take the 300 and 301, you should be able to just brush up on some PowerShell and then go right into like a 100 or 101 because the knowledge that you had from 300, there's a lot of duplication. If you look at my courses for um, the 100 and 101 tests, there, you'll see that um, if you took this on the 300, it might just be a refresher for you on the 100. Now, 203 is relatively new. We haven't seen the exam. Nobody's actually taken the 203 yet as I record this, but it should be it should be relatively easier than the 300, but there's coding aspects. And so we're talking more again, .NET and um, filling in the blanks and what's this code do and how does this work? That's one approach. So do the architecture first and then the rest is just um, brushing up on some knowledge specific to those roles. The other approach is uh, you can take the fundamentals test first. That's, that's, I mean, most people, if they give any time to studying a day or two, should be able to pass the fundamentals test. I'm not even going to consider that. Um, but if you take the 100 test, that is the beginning of the 100 and 101 series, in my opinion. If you can study for and pass that, well, that'll give you a good, a good foundation in which you can learn more. Okay, you, then you'll understand how Microsoft words their questions how case studies work, how the labs work, performance-based testing, different question types. Um, really, it focuses you on less of what you need to know. If you look at the 100 requirements, it's only very specific things. Um, then you take 100 and 101, uh, and then you can decide to move on to 300 or 200, depending on your interests, and maybe you've got background in development, or maybe you don't have background in development. That will um, lead you forward. Okay, so this it's, this video has been long enough. Thanks a lot for sticking it through. But these are the approaches. It is a cop out answer, true, but it is up to you whether you go for the hardest first, which is the 300 series, or the easiest first, which could be the 100 series. If you come from a development background, you might be gravitating towards the development test first because you've got that familiarity of how .NET works. Um, all you got to do is just play around the Azure SDK, and you can. Potentially, you can do that pretty quickly. So it really is where you're coming from, what your existing knowledge and skills, where your interests lie. But these are the tests. This is the options that you have available to you. I hope this helped you. Uh, thanks a lot. I do have courses on AZ100 and 101. I do have an architecture, architecture course. I'm still working on the developer course that should be coming out shortly as well. So all three courses are available. You can go to udemy.com, search for my name, Scott Duffy. And there will be a link in the description to uh, to see those courses. Or you can go to my site, which is herocourses.com, and you can get a subscription for a very low monthly rate. You can have access to everything that I make. And as I create new courses, you'll get automatic access to that as well. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate you being here. And we'll see you guys another time.